Let's clear from Santalan Yoga. For today's session, we will be opening up through the upper back and shoulders, working along the bilateral sides of the body, uh, left and right, and also doing some gentle twisting through the spine. So for today's class, you might like a couple of blocks or a strap and also um, either a rolled up towel or a secondary mat for the first part of class. So gather your props and join me here on the mat. So starting off, we want to open up through the chest and release through the upper spine. So either gathering um, a rolled up towel or you can use a secondary mat. Or if you have yoga blocks, you can use a yoga block as well, but you do need to have a little bit of flexibility in the upper spine already to use a yoga block. So I'll demonstrate with a second mat. So just starting off, laying down on the back and we want to position the prop so that it's just underneath the shoulder blades or slightly below. So laying down, it might take a little bit of adjustment to get it in the right spot. Once you feel it's in the right spot, just releasing the upper back over the prop, releasing the head down. If the mat is a bit far away uh, or the head is a bit far away from the mat, you can also use a block to prop your head up. Otherwise, if the neck is okay, you don't have any neck issues, you can just release the head straight back down and get some opening through the front of the throat as well. Arms can either be alongside the body or out in a T shape. Or if you wish, you can bend from the elbows and bring the upper arms straight up alongside the head. So just finding a position that feels most comfortable to you. And we'll hold this position for a moment. Just let the body settle into this position. And let the upper back release over the prop that you've got. Nice, long, slow breaths.
taking one more breath here. And wherever you are, bring your arms down, bending through the knees, bring the feet down to the mat. And either rolling to one side or pressing yourself up to a seated position. Now that position at first might feel a little bit uncomfortable, but as you breathe through it, you, your body will start to soften and relax into the posture. And you should be able to feel that you can really open up through the chest and shoulders in that position. So the next one we'll do, I've got a couple of options for you depending on um, how tight your shoulders are at this point in time. So the first one, we'll start by lying on our front. So lying on your front, bring both arms out to a T-shape through the shoulders. Uh, keeping the right arm straight, we'll bend through the left arm. Bring the right ear down to the floor. And what we're doing is just rolling onto our right side. And you can either keep the left leg straight or you can bend through the knee. Place that foot down on the floor behind you. So gently twisting and opening up through the front of the right shoulder. So you can either stay here, or if you're feeling reasonably strong through the shoulders, what we'll do is we'll start from a seat position, right arm behind, lifting up through the hips, keeping the left foot bent, right leg straight, and reaching the left arm up and over, doing a bit of a back bend here as well. And we're opening up more to the left in this position. So choosing whichever variation that you'd like there. If you've been lying on your front, taking one more breath. And if you're up into the wild thing, one more breath as well. Wherever you are releasing. And we'll switch to the other side. So if you're down on your belly, strengthening through the left arm now, right hand coming in, bending the elbow up, rolling over onto the left side, bringing that right leg behind, placing it down on the floor, twisting through the spine. or if you'd like the stronger variation. Sitting down on the left hip, bring the left arm behind. Lifting up and over, releasing the right arm up and back. Wherever you are, one more breath. And releasing. All right. Now this time, coming up on hands and knees, knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. 
walking the hands forward to the front of your mat. Bring the knees out wide, big toes to touch, and releasing the hips back to the heels. Bring the chest down to the floor. Reaching with the fingertips away from the body. So our hands and our hips are going in opposite directions. Now you can stay here if you wish, or if you'd like a stronger stretch through the armpits and shoulders, coming back up to a tabletop position, bringing the knees in line with the hips, feet in line with the hips. And this time walking the hands forward and just releasing chest out of the mat, keeping the bottom up. So you can bring your forehead down or bring just the chin down. This just changes the angle of the stretch through the hips. Again, you can stay here, or if you want an even bigger stretch through the shoulders, bring the forearms together, bring the palms of the hands together, and releasing the head in between the upper arms. You can also choose to start lifting the forearms up and bring the hands onto the back of the head. Wherever you are, taking one more breath. All right, lifting the head and releasing down onto the front of the stomach. Very slowly down. Bring the legs hip width apart, arms shoulder width apart, reaching forward to the front of the mat. This time as we inhale, we're going to lift the right arm and the left leg. Hold it for a moment before releasing that down and then we'll do the opposites. 
So in your own time, as we inhale, right arm will be left. Exhale. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Right arm, left leg. Left arm, right leg. Right arm, left leg. Left arm, right leg. This time we'll do both arms and legs together. And as we do this, we want to imagine that we're essentially being pulled apart by our ankles and our wrists. We want to have that feeling of reaching both the legs and the arms away from the center of the body. So in your own time, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. And for this last time as we inhale, we want to hold here for a couple of breaths. See if you can get the arms and the legs a little bit higher this time. One more breath and releasing back down. Right, turning your head to one side, resting here for a moment, letting the body rebound out of that strong back lift. All right, now coming back up to a tabletop position, making sure the knees are under the hips, hands are underneath the shoulders, placing the weight onto the left hand. As we inhale, lifting the right arm up, opening up through the chest. And as we exhale, we're going to bring the right arm underneath the left and bring the right shoulder and the right ear down to the mat. Inhaling. Moving with the breath. Exhaling. Folding forward, threading the arm under. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling the right arm down. Right, left arm aside, bring the weight into the right hand, inhaling, left arm up. Exhaling, threading the left arm underneath the right, coming down onto the left shoulder and ear. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling one more time, and exhaling down. All right. Now this is where you might like some props. So a couple of blocks or a couple of books, whatever you've got. We'll place the blocks either side here and we're going to come into a low lunge. So, stepping the right foot forward between the hands or between the blocks. 
just lifting the left knee up momentarily before releasing the left knee back down. This is just to ensure that our kneecap is in a good position. You can either leave the left toes tucked or you can bring the top of the foot flat to the floor, whatever feels more comfortable for you. So either hands on the mat or up onto a block. And we're just releasing down through this left flexor. If you're very tight, you can always have blocks up on a higher setting as well. And this just helps the body to release into these deeper stretches because a lot of people can have problems with these flexors, especially if you're sitting at a desk all day. These can get incredibly tight. And the use of the blocks help our body to release by knowing that it's safe, it's in a safe range, it's not going to tighten, it's not going to cramp. Anything that we can do to support the body is always good. One more breath here. All right, if you're using the blocks, bring them down to the lower setting, placing the left hand on the floor or the block, right hand onto the right knee, and we're just going to gently twist towards the right. Changing the stretch into this left hip, sinking down through the right hip. One more breath here. Now you can stay here. We're just going to walk this right foot out to the right. Again, either keeping your hands down onto the floor or up onto blocks. Bending through the elbows, releasing the torso down the side of the right leg, or you can stay sitting up. If you're feeling quite open through the hips, you can also release down onto the forearms. So again, either on blocks or on the floor. One more breath here. Wherever you are, coming back up onto the hands and very slowly releasing out of that left hip, bringing both your hips back towards the back of the mat, very slowly. Getting a little stretch through the left hamstring left calf, I mean, sorry, right hamstring, right calf. You may even start to feel it in the lower back as well. All right, 
come back to a neutral position. Bring the right leg back to meet the left. Placing the blocks back to its original position. Maybe if you want to, you can wiggle the hips side to side. Bring the left leg forward into the center of the mat, a block on either side. Coming up onto the right foot and slowly releasing the right knee down, making sure that kneecap is in a good position. Again, keeping the toes tucked or placing the top of the foot flat onto the mat, depending on what feels more comfortable for you. And again, also, if you want to have your hands down on the mat, you can put your hands down on the mat or up onto blocks. So starting to release through the right hip now. Choose the setting of your blocks if you're using blocks. Also, just noticing how the side is feeling comparing to the left. Each exhale, just softening the hips, allowing the body to release into the pose. Taking one more breath. Bring the blocks down, placing the right hand down to the floor or the block, left hand up into the left leg. You can also walk the foot out from the centre line if you wish, the left foot, and gently twisting towards the left. And you can look out in front or you can look over to the left arm, or you can also start to rotate the head and the neck looking over the left shoulder too. One more breath, releasing the left hand, coming back ever so gently, walking that left foot out towards the left edge of the mat, and bring both hands down to the centre onto the mat or on top of the blocks. Bending through the elbows, starting to release the body down. If you're feeling quite open, bring the forearms down.
One more breath here. Wherever you are, coming back up into the hands. And starting to slowly release the hips back, releasing a little stretch for that right hip flexor. Pausing here for a moment, getting a nice stretch through the left ankle, maybe into the calf, into the hamstring. You might also start to feel it in the lower back as well. You can also walk the hands back for balance. Feeling the body release and rebound. And bringing that left leg back to meet the right. Right, giving the hips a little wiggle from side to side. Maybe doing some circles if that feels good. Couple in one direction, a couple in the other. Placing the blocks off to one side. And starting to get more into the shoulders and the arms now. Starting on the right side, bringing the right hip down to the mat. Bending both knees, bring them in. Now the first variation of this pose is uh, you can bring the forearm down and we want the elbow and the shoulder in alignment and either the hand pressing palm down. Some people find it useful if they make a fist as well, so just see how you go. And we want to be nice and strong through the core of the body. So getting that sensation of lifting up through the right hand side of the body and nice and long through the left hand side. Uh, so standing with bent knees, you want to extend the legs long. Bring the feet back to the mat a little further. And when you're ready, we're going to push up through the forearm, up into the shoulder, making sure it's nice and square. And we're going to lift the hips up off the mat. So in your own time when you're ready, inhaling, lifting up. You can bring the left arm alongside the body, or you can bring it straight up. Or if that's too challenging, you can bring the left hand back down towards the mat to give you some support. Uh, the other option here, if all of that is too strong, is to bring the left leg foot down onto the mat. So you um, are using the left foot and the right arm as the support and just lifting the hips in that way. If you're feeling pretty confident, you can come up to the next level, which is a straight arm. Fingers pointing outwards, off to the right. Again, legs together. And when you're ready, inhaling, lifting the hips up. Bring the left arm alongside the body or bringing the left arm straight up, fingers pointing towards the ceiling. Again, you can choose to bring the left foot in. So you've got two points of contact here. So wherever you are, one more breath and releasing back down. All right, giving the shoulders a little shake. That's quite a strong posture there. And moving to the other side. So ideally, whichever variation you chose on the right side, we want to repeat to the left to make sure that that is being used evenly. 
So if you're starting with the forearm down, making sure that the left elbow is in alignment with the right shoulder. And we really want to be rolling those shoulders back and down. We don't want to be caving in because that can injure our rotator cuff and our shoulders. So nice and strong. Extending the legs away onto the left side now. Having that feeling of lifting up through the left side of the body. Nice and long through the right. When you're ready, inhaling, lifting the hips up. Arm alongside or fingers coming straight up. Again, the option to bring the right foot up. Having a couple of points of contact there. Or if you want, with the left arm straight, lifting up, nice and strong through the shoulders, rolling the shoulders back and down, inhaling, lifting up. Or again, with the right foot coming forward, giving you that extra bit of support. Here's my balance there. It happens. All right, wherever you are, one more breath. And releasing the hips back down. Oh. If you managed to hold that whole time, you've done very well. Pat yourself on the back. All right, rolling your shoulders. Getting nice and loose through the shoulders. All right, we'll do Releasing the knees out to the sides. Rolling the shoulders back and down. Letting the knees release out to the left and the right. Again, you can use blocks here. If the legs are a bit stubborn, if the hips are still a bit stuck, you can place the blocks underneath the knees at any height that you wish. Again, this just allows the body to fully relax and release into the pose. As you start to feel the hips soften, you can start walking the blocks away so that the feet are down lower and lower. You can place the hands on top of the knees if you wish, or you can place them on the feet. But remember to be nice and tall through the spine. Feel like that you're hunching a bit, it can be good to prop yourself up on a blanket. Just popping that underneath the bottom can really help with any tension in the back. One more breath here. All right, pushing the knees back up to center, releasing the feet down to the mat. And we're going to come back down onto our fronts again. Releasing down onto the stomach. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Forearms down onto the mat. Rolling the shoulders back and down, chin onto the mat. Legs can be nice and relaxed. Inhaling, lifting the chin, lifting the head, lifting the chest. And depending on how your back is feeling, you can just do like a little baby cobra lift here, pausing here. Or if you wish, you can start extending up through the arms. Just noticing what's happening in your own body. So pushing the floor away with the hands. 
rolling the shoulders back and down, looking forward or having a slight raise of the chin. One more breath, wherever you are. And bending through the elbows, slowly releasing the spine back down. Hips, belly button, ribs, chest and chin. Pausing here for a moment. We can stay in this position if you wish, particularly if the back is feeling a little bit sore. Or you can walk the hands back so that the hands are at armpit height. Elbows can be up off the mat now. Rolling the shoulders back and down, bringing the chin into the chest. As we inhale, lifting the head, lifting the chest. Pressing down through the arms, squeezing those elbows in the sides of the body. Pressing up. Making sure that we're not locking the elbows. We want to keep a nice micro bend through here. Wherever you are, rolling the shoulders back and down. Nice and tall through the spine, through the head. Looking forward or lifting the chin slightly. One more breath. Bending through the elbows, slowly releasing down. Hips, belly button, ribs, chest, and releasing down once the chin touches the floor, turning the head to one side. Again, staying with either the first level or the second level, or if you wish, you can bring the hands back alongside the waist now. Elbows still pointing up. Rolling the shoulders back and down, chin to the mat. Lifting the chin, lifting the head, lifting the chest. Inhaling as we're coming up, pressing down through the hands. Once we get up to this height, really important to be squeezing the glute muscles to protect the lower back. Rolling the shoulders back and down again once we're at the top. Looking forward or lifting the chin. One more breath. Bending through the elbows, slowly releasing down. Hips, belly button, bottom of the ribs, chest. And keep releasing down to the chin. Turning the head to one side and releasing the hands now. Pausing here for a moment. Right, bringing the hands underneath the shoulders again, pressing up and back to a tabletop position. Bring the knees under the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. If you wish, bringing a block here. So, bringing the right knee to the right wrist. Right foot coming over to the left knee. 
and walking the left knee and leg backwards, straighten through that left leg. Either staying here, or if you wish, you can support the hip with a block so that you're a little bit more raised. Totally up to you, where you feel comfortable. You can also put a rolled up blanket under here as well. Or, as always, you can use the blocks for the hands. Nice and tall through the spine. Sinking down through the hips. And then when you're ready, walking the hands away, releasing through the hips, coming down towards the mat. Bring the forearms down. You can release your hands down to the forearms. Or if it's a bit far away, you can use the block. Press your, press your feet on the block at whatever height it feels comfortable. I'm going to hold this for a few breaths here. Releasing into this glute stretch. One more breath here. Get down onto the floor, releasing onto the forearms and the hands, walking the hands back, pressing yourself back up. Placing the hands down onto the mat, tucking the toes of the left foot, lifting up out of the hips. And doing your best to bring that right leg back. However that happens. You might also like to roll over onto the right hip and then just sit up, come back into the tabletop position. So knees under the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. Bring the left knee in towards the left hand. Left foot to right knee. And walking that right leg back, inching it back, extending it back, however you can get there. Extending that right leg back on the mat, keeping the left knee bent. And you can place that block or blanket under the hip if you need. Or again, using blocks to lift the torso up, becoming nice and straight and strong through the back. Sinking down through these hips, getting these hips down towards the floor. Again, this helps release through those hip flexors and also through the lower part of the abdomen. Stretching through the front of the body, strengthening the back. When you're ready, walking the hands down, coming down through the hips, releasing down onto the floor. Bring your head to a block if you wish, or releasing down to forearms, and we'll hold here.
One more breath here. Wherever you are, into the forearms, onto the hands, walking those hands back to the hips. And either sliding the left leg back or rolling over onto the left hip. Whatever feels more comfortable and more natural for you. Back to tabletop. Wiggling the hips side to side. Doing a few circles. And now bringing the knees forward, releasing down onto the bottom. Extending the legs out in front. This is where you might like a strength. And again, if the back is tight, if the hamstrings are tight, you can sit up onto a blanket. It really helps with this position. So I'll demonstrate with the blanket, sitting on the very edge. We don't want too much underneath the legs. Bring the legs together. If you are tight, do feel free to use a strap or a towel or a scarf. Placing it on the soles of the feet, bring them alongside the body. Inhaling the arms up either side, drawing tall through the spine and neck, hinging from the hips as we extend the arms forward, reaching, 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 reaching for the toes. We want that back to be nice and straight, no hunching. So if you can only make it to here, that's fine. Placing the hands wherever they land, whether they're on the legs, on the floor, or if you can, reaching for the toes, or again for the strap, you can hold on to the strap. But we want these toes to be flexing back towards the body. We want to imagine that we're pressing our feet into a wall rather than letting them be loose. We want them flexing back. We want the legs to be engaged. And we want the hips to release and to essentially lay our torso down onto the legs. So wherever you are, looking towards the toes or a spot in front of the feet down onto the mat. If you can reach the toes, bring the index finger and middle finger to the inside of the big toes, thumbs on top, gently pulling your torso along the legs. Nice and soft through the shoulders, head and neck. We don't want any tension through here at all. Or another option if you can reach the feet is bring the hands alongside the outside of the feet. Or if you're nice and open through the hamstrings and back, bring the hands, both hands along the soles of the feet, interlace the fingers. Essentially hugging your legs in towards your body and releasing the torso along the legs. I will hold this position. One more breath here, wherever you are. Releasing the strap or bringing the hands down to the floor, pressing through the hands, walking the torso back up, using your hands. 
Bring the back out to see the position. Use the strap, place the strap off to one side. If you're sitting on the blanket, coming off the blanket. And ready. Getting yourself ready for Shavasana. So putting any extra clothes on or bring the blanket and placing that on top of your body. Feet hip width or further apart. Bring the fingertips to touch. And we're going to lay back, laying our spine long along the mat with control, releasing the spine down. Once the shoulders touch the mat, allowing the arms to release, letting the arms roll away, letting the hands roll away and the legs roll away. Tucking the chin into the chest. Releasing the neck long along the mat. And here's my favorite friend for Shavasana. Hello, Mandy. Can I join us? All right. Finding a spot on the ceiling to focus on. And softening your focus on that spot. If you feel comfortable, closing the eyes. With the eyes closed, drawing the eyes down as if you're looking down towards the toes and holding that spot for about 10 seconds. Once you've reached 10, just suddenly let the eyes go and let your eyes soften in sockets. Coming back into the breath, breathing in through the nose, back in the throat, down into the lungs, out of the lungs, back of the throat, out through the nose. Just allowing the breath to move in and out of the body without forcing it or controlling it. Deepening the breath. Now bring your mind to the spine lying flat on the mat. This time as we inhale, 
Imagine that we're inhaling through the belly button and we want to follow our breath from the pelvis, flowing up through the spine, through the lower spine, mid spine, upper spine, back of the neck, coming up and into the head, up to the eyebrow center. And as we exhale, down from the eyebrow center, through the back of the neck, upper spine, mid spine, lower spine, down into the pelvis. We do a few rounds like this, inhaling. Exhaling. Feel the air moving up the spine like a wave as we inhale. And as we exhale, moving down through the spine. This time as we inhale, also have a vision in your mind as we breathe up along the spine. See a radiant point of light moving up through the spinal column as well as we inhale. So moving from the pelvis, coming up through the lower spine, mid spine, upper spine, back of the neck into the head and up to the eyebrow center. As we exhale, that point of light moves from the eyebrow center, back through the head, back of the neck, upper back, lower back, mid back, down through the pelvis. So just a gentle awareness both the breath and the point of light moving up and down the spine. Now adding another element as we breathe in through the, as we inhale, following the breath, moving up the spine, following the point of light, as we inhale, same mantra so, moving up the spine, and as we exhale, hum. Hum. So. Hum. So. Hum. So. So, 
hum. One more time, slow. Hum. Now dropping the mantra, so hum. Keep envisioning breath and the point of light moving up and down the spine. Through the Shishumna Nadi, the central energy line. your next round of breath, dropping the visualization of the point of light, but continuing with following the breath up and down the spine. Your next full round of breath, dropping the concentration of following the breath up and down the spine, and just allowing the breathing to return to its natural, spontaneous pattern. Just observing the breath. Observing the body. And observing the mind. When you're ready, rolling over onto one side. Pausing here for a moment, starting to wriggle the fingers and the toes. And when you're ready, keeping your eyes closed, pressing yourself back up to a seated position. Finding a comfortable seat. Close the practice, we will chant three ohms, taking one breath to prepare, inhaling, and exhaling, inhaling for ohm, uh, Nice. 
nice and warm, placing the palms of the hands over the eyes, opening the eyes into the palms of the hands, looking into the palms of the hands, letting your eyes adjust to the light. Placing the palms over the cheeks. Placing the palms over the throat and the neck. Placing the palms together again. Rubbing the palms of the hands together. Backs of the hands, fingers and thumbs. Wrists, forearms. Upper arms, maybe the shoulders and the neck as well. We've done lots of hard work for us today. Back of the neck. Rolling the shoulders a couple of times. Placing the hands back to the chest and to the heart center again. Thank you for joining me today for class. We did a really strong class through the shoulders and spine today in the back. I hope you enjoyed that. And you can practice this anytime, of course, from this recording. If you enjoyed this class, give it a like. And if you would like to see more or like to support me in the making of these videos, you can find me at Patreon Santaline Yoga. I'll put the link in the description below. Again, thank you for joining me for class. Hario, Tatsat.